Better Call Saul is undoubtedly the best piece of media I've ever seen. Six seasons of flawless, masterful storytelling. Well, near flawless. You are much smarter than I was when I was your age. The character writing is phenomenal. This show demonstrates how much you can do with dialogue, as well as how much you can do without dialogue, both incredibly impressively. And if I made videos solely about this show for the rest of my life, I would still have more to say about it, so I'm not really gonna try. I very seldom give out 10 out of 10s, but with this show, I would not hesitate. It's absolutely a 10 out of 10. With that said, this video has major spoilers for the series, so if you haven't seen it, what are you doing here? Go watch it right now. Hot take, you should go watch it even if you haven't seen Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is incredibly good, don't get me wrong, but that's 60 extra hours of television that I would say aren't quite as good and aren't necessary to appreciate the vast majority of what Better Call Saul has to offer. Final spoiler warning. I again heavily recommend this show, more than anything else I've ever seen. Okay, we're starting for real now. In season 4, Jimmy has been suspended from the law for a year, and to fill that year, he ends up taking a job at a cell phone store that doesn't get a whole lot of traffic. He can't take having such an easy job, while Kim is working so hard, so he starts selling drop phones as a side business during his off time. He runs into some complications, but eventually gets into the swing of it. That's a massive oversimplification, because season 4 is one of the better seasons of such a fantastic show, but it's all we need to reach the scene I want to talk about. Montages are something Better Call Saul does like no other, and the season's seventh episode, Something Stupid, starts us out with one. That montage is one of the two we're here to talk about today. In Season 5's 8th episode, Bagman, Jimmy goes out to the desert to collect money for Lalo Salamanca's bail. But while Jimmy is making his way back, he gets attacked by some guys sent by Juan Bolsa. Mike takes them out, but as he and Jimmy are driving back to Albuquerque, Jimmy's car breaks down because... The alternator's shot. Literally so they have to walk the rest of the way through the desert. Jimmy told Kim it would be a quick trip, so when he's still not back after more than a day, she's getting worried. The next episode, Bad Choice Road, opens with a montage following the events of that episode. This is the other montage we're going to be talking about. I originally was going to format this as a chronological breakdown of the two scenes, like my videos usually are, but because of the way the scenes are structured and the lack of dialogue, I decided to switch up the format a little bit, and point out the neat details in these scenes in the form of an Iceberg Explained video, which if you haven't seen one before, is just a video that goes through facts that get increasingly more obscure. With that, let's get started. The Gene Takovic tier. The stuff here is basic, surface level stuff about the montages. Kim and Jimmy grow apart. The point of the montage in Season 4 is to show the eight months that take place after Jimmy gets disbarred, and Kim takes the job at Schweiker and Coakley. The main point of this montage is to show what they are doing during the period, on top of how the two of them grow apart, as shown by the many details that are soon to be highlighted by the other entries of this iceberg. Lola Marsh The songs that score both montages are a lyrical and instrumental cover with humming, respectively, of the song Something Stupid, both done by the Israeli pop band Lola Marsh. They were commissioned specifically for the episodes, and I'm glad they were, because they're some pretty awesome pieces of music. Song Lyrics If you listen to the lyrics of Something Stupid, you can see that it was picked out because it mirrors Jimmy and Kim's relationship in a lot of ways. The song wasn't originally written for the show, so it doesn't match up one to one, of course but it was a good choice. One particularly notable parallel is that them saying, I love you, does only come at the end of their relationship, in a way spoiling it all, in the episode Fun and Games. I love you. I love you too. But so what? Jimmy and Kim reunite. The main point of the latter montage is to show the rest of Jimmy's journey after Bagman to make it back to civilization, while Kim stresses over whether he's dead or not. 
One of the most important contrasts it puts forth with the details throughout is how Jimmy is in a much more dangerous situation than Kim, yet the two are equally distraught because she cares for him so much. Huel Babineau Another aspect of the first montage is that Jimmy and Huel grow closer together as Huel works as Jimmy's security for his phone business. He's helping him every time we see Jimmy at his side gig, and they're eating lunch together as well. This becomes important going forwards, as Huel becomes a more significant figure in Jimmy's life, who reappears throughout the series, and of course during the time frame of Breaking Bad. The Saul Goodman Tier The stuff here is a little bit more hidden, but not by much. We're digging into the details, but ones that are still pretty readily apparent. Water Usage In the second montage, Kim washes her face off with water, as Jimmy wipes the sweat off of his face. Then, Kim fills a cup with water and drinks from it to take her pill, as Jimmy hesitantly takes a sip from his water bottle filled with urine. Both of these create a contrast, by showing Jimmy's dire situation, and how Kim is taking for granted the fact that she has water so readily available. Just like Jimmy did at the start of Bagman when he washed off his shoe. Brushing Teeth In the first montage, Kim and Jimmy are first seen brushing their teeth together, then individually but still facing the same way, then facing opposite each other. It's a very small portion of their lives, but it's one of the many ways the montage portrays them growing apart. The Dividing Line Lines dividing visuals are often a fairly unassuming aspect of montages, but in these ones, its presence shows the separation between the two. In the second montage, it goes away right when Jimmy gets cell service, as the barrier is no longer there, and they can talk to each other now. In the first, it's used very creatively. At first, it's just a usual divider between the two different shots we're seeing. Then, there are times where Kim and Jimmy are in the same shot, yet the line is still separating them. They do cross it, like when Kim sticks her leg over the line. But the division it represents becomes more and more prominent as the montage goes on. Workloads A contrast between the two in the first montage is that Kim is shown working hard at her job, while Jimmy doesn't have much to do. When she is getting her files moved into her office, Jimmy is throwing around a ball at work because he rarely gets any customers. Additionally, there's a shot with Kim in bed with Mesa Verde files, while Jimmy is on the couch watching TV showing that she has so much work that she needs to bring it home, and doesn't have time to watch TV with him like they usually do. This came up in the season's fifth episode as well. It's what incited the side gig. Wildlife A simple contrast in the second montage is that Jimmy and Mike walk past a rattlesnake, while the camera on Kim's side goes into the goldfish's tank. Jimmy and Mike are surrounded by dangerous animals, in contrast to the peaceful pet at Kim's apartment. Eating Dinner Similar to the toothbrushing, Kim and Jimmy are seen eating dinner together. The first time, despite the dividing line, Jimmy crosses over it to pour her some wine, and they smile at each other. The second time they are eating the same meal right next to each other, but are caught up in their own stuff, the dividing line making its presence more known. Then the third time, they aren't eating together, or even eating the same food. Kim is having a salad while Jimmy has cereal. It's another neat way to show them drifting apart. The James M. McGill, Esquire, tier. This stuff is a little less apparent. You gotta be kind of attentive to catch either these details, or to catch the meaning behind them. Kim fades to black. At the end of the first montage, when Kim climbs into bed and the dividing line is between the two, Jimmy wakes up and Kim's side of the screen fades to black. After they've been drifting apart for eight months, he realizes that at this point, Kim might as well not be a part of his life. It's a tragic but amazing way to conclude that montage. Intense Heat While Kim's cigarette is close up on screen, we see a heat wave slightly obscuring our view of Jimmy and Mike. It shows the contrast between Kim lighting the cigarette, creating heat, to be more comfortable, while the heat is uncomfortable and even dangerous to Jimmy and Mike. 
On top of that, Kim and Jimmy are never seen smoking in their apartment before this point. So this shows how stressed she is now to be willing to do that. Mesa Verde vs PPDs Every time Kim opens a little trophy representing a new branch of Mesa Verde that her legal work helped to open, Jimmy is filling out a PPD form. It's a very poignant contrast, because it shows that during this period, Kim's legal work gets put on display in a trophy case, while the only legal work Jimmy is able to do gets shoved into a drawer as he waits for the day he can get back to being a lawyer. Color Symbolism Better Call Saul is a show that uses a lot of color symbolism, the most prominent aspect being blue and red along with colors similar to each, representing opposite sides of the law or rules. During the first montage, Kim tends to be wearing blue, and at times Jimmy is too, like in his outfit for his job at the phone store. The constant of Kim wearing blue outfits contrasts with Jimmy's varying outfits as while the law pervades her life at this point, Jimmy is only being a rule follower when he's on the clock. Other than that, it doesn't suit him, so he tends to get a bit more colorful. And that's another aspect of color symbolism the show sets up. Partially through the Jean era, which I don't really want to get into here, but most notably in Season 2 Episode 7, Inflatable, Jimmy buys a wide array of colorful suits as a way of bending the rules at work not quite breaking any rules, because that would get him fired for cause, but instead trying his hardest to get fired with plausible deniability. When he later in the same episode asks Kim to work with him at their own practice, she asks, Are you going to play it straight? Or are you going to be colorful? Because his typical MO involves bending the rules a bit and having a little fun. And that's what colorful tends to mean throughout the show. In this montage, his colorful outfits are for when he's selling phones, because that's something he has a bit of fun doing, and in a similar way, it isn't technically illegal, because he has a permit. It's just not an especially law-abiding thing to do, because his main customers are criminals. In the second montage, the main color symbolism is Jimmy wearing a pink shirt, already at odds with the law because he's working to become a friend of the cartel but he is thrust deeper into the criminal world by the gunfight that splatters blood onto his shirt, adding more red. Names As Jimmy goes on break and gets a business card under the name Saul Goodman, we see Kim's name get put up on her office. At this point, Kim is making a name for herself, and Jimmy's side business isn't one he wants to go at with his real name, so he uses his made-up one to not be directly associated with it. And this isn't a name he wants to be known widely, either, which is why it's just on his business cards he'll be handing to customers. Sunlight The second montage opens up to the sun on Jimmy's side, and a window on Kim's, to show that from where she is, sunlight is nice and pretty, whereas in the desert it's strong and harmful. It's a major hindrance for Jimmy and Mike, contrasting the two situations further. Stress in one of the shots, we see Jimmy go on break to sell his phones, which he is not stressed about at all, whereas Kim is shown clutching a stress ball while talking over plans with Mesa Verde. It's a fairly simple contrast, but not as easy to catch as some of the others. The Slip and Jimmy tier. We're going even deeper. The stuff here requires a bit more digging to notice or pull meaning from. Jimmy feeds the fish. In the first montage, when Kim and Jimmy are no longer eating in the same room, Jimmy is so lonely that he goes over to feed the fish, so that he doesn't have to eat alone. Because this is the first time we see him eating alone, rather than with Kim there. Walking Directions In the final shot of the second montage, before the dividing line disappears, Jimmy is walking towards the camera, while Kim is walking away from it, which is kind of like them walking towards each other. A bit of a stretch, but I feel like them walking in opposite directions was intentional. Office Contrast In the first montage, Kim is getting all of the Mesa Verde files put into her office, as Jimmy and Huel take out phones to sell them. It's done in opposite fashion. For Kim, they're adding boxes until they block the camera, but for Jimmy, the phones originally block the camera until they're taken away. 
This shows Kim's success compared to Jimmy at the moment, because even when her office is filled with all the Mesa Verde files, it still looks more spacious than Jimmy's after the phones get removed. Lyrical Differences The version of Something Stupid they commissioned for the montage actually has slightly different lyrics from the original. The original says, I can see it in your eyes, that you despise the same old lies you heard the night before. Whereas in the cover, it says the same old lines. Which is more fitting, especially for Jimmy and Kim. The song talks about finding clever lines to say to make the meaning come through. Which is actually another difference. The lyrics for older versions of the song often transcribe it as true rather than through. But when I listen, I can hear either. Using through instead of true was the correct choice here as well as both of these choices make it so that they're not lying to each other about how they feel, but rather trying to dress it up and say it in a different way. With them both being lawyers and being pretty closed off emotionally, trying to use clever lines rather than saying I love you is how their relationship tends to go, even if those clever lines are trying to convey the same idea. Stereo Audio Both versions of the song are in stereo, and in both of them, the two members of Lola Marsh are on different sides. In the vocal version, the female voice is in the left ear, while the male voice is in the right ear. Paralleling where Kim and Jimmy are on screen, and they stay there for the entire duration. In the humming version though, they've swapped ears because Jimmy and Kim swapped sides. On top of that, rather than staying apart on the left and right the whole time, they come together into the middle towards the end, because that's when Jimmy and Kim get reunited. Use of off time. We see Jimmy turning the sign to go on break and go sell phones, while Kim is talking to Bill Oakley, giving a contrast of what the two do in their off time. Kim is out helping her clients get the fairest sentence they can, so that they can set their lives on a better path, whereas Jimmy is selling something to criminals that's going to help them continue to operate illegally, with no care for what they end up doing with it. Additionally, we see that Jimmy gets more off time to use this way than Kim does, as he goes on break more often and at times while she's shown working, and even then, he takes his off time at a more leisurely pace, shown by him and Huel taking a break to eat, while Kim is helping multiple pro bono clients at a rapid pace. Jimmy is always behind. At the start of the first montage, Jimmy's side doesn't fade in until a few seconds after Kim's, when they're not brushing their teeth together anymore, Jimmy is shown walking up to brush his teeth, as Kim has already finished both times. This, and a lot of other details, emphasize the sluggishness of Jimmy's situation. Unlike Kim, he's never in any rush. The Jimmy McGill tier. This one's for the stuff buried deepest. These details you're probably only going to catch if you're spending your time over analyzing the montage like me or they're just stretches. Cast versus Juice This shot is down here because, honestly, I don't really know what the meaning behind it is, or if it even has any. The only connection I can pull is that both of these activities are loud, but this was the one shot of the montage I couldn't solidly pull anything from. If you have an idea on what's being communicated here, share your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear an interesting interpretation of this shot. Humming While the first montage has a vocal version of the song over it, the second one just has humming instead. At this moment, Jimmy and Kim are so separated that they can't talk to each other until Jimmy finds cell service, so it's like the singers aren't able to say anything either. Sign Flipping Details even the super short sequences of Jimmy flipping the sign to go on break are imbued with detail. He checks left and right each time, because he's always hoping for customers even though he extremely rarely gets any. 
and by the third time he looks almost defeated, like he's looking left and right, but knows now more than ever that it's not going to make any difference. Also, the second time he flips the sign, he's whistling, to contrast Kim being stressed at that moment in the montage. On top of that, it's a different holiday each time he flips the sign, to show the passage of time. Music Theory In the vocal version of the first montage, the two vocal parts are constantly in harmony but never meet up, whilst the humming in the second one is in unison. This mirrors how in the first montage they are going in different directions, but by the time of the second, even though they can't speak to each other, hence the humming, they are more aligned and going in the same direction at this point, trying to meet back up. 1053 Jimmy and Kim's clocks read 1053 in the shot where they're sleeping, which could be taken as spelling out lose, because Jimmy is slowly losing Kim as they are drifting away from each other. Or it could just be a coincidence, but I won't accept that. Bravo, Vince. Fade in. In the second montage, Kim's side fades in after Jimmy's, and she checks her phone as he is checking his service. She fades in second, because this time, instead of Jimmy being behind, he's the one with the active role, and all she can do is wait for him. Pouring the wine. Because of the show's use of red, to pertain to illegal things and criminals, Jimmy pouring the red wine into Kim's glass could be taken as him turning her more and more against the law as time goes on, filling her life with more criminal aspects, until she reaches where she does in Season 6. Now that we've finished the iceberg, it's clear that these scenes have a lot of detail hidden within them and it all comes together to build up the message they're trying to convey beautifully and efficiently. In the Season 4 montage, it not only shows Kim and Jimmy having contrasting lives as was apparent earlier in the season, but also shows how those contrasting lives are causing them to slowly drift apart from each other. Each shot as the montage progresses contrasts them in more and more different ways, and shows how they are becoming increasingly separated from each other during these 8 months. It's all done so creatively too, with the dividing line being a key player in multiple ways throughout the montage, and Kim fading out in the end to show how Jimmy is feeling in the present, and why he is so focused on finding a shared office for them in this episode, as well as fueling his actions at the Schweiker and Coakley reception after his visit to Kim's office shows him just how contrasting their lives have become. For all these reasons, this montage would be my pick for the best scene in all of Better Call Saul, and maybe even the best scene in anything I've ever seen. With that said, the Season 5 montage is no slouch either. It achieves its purpose effectively too, contrasting Jimmy and Kim's situations, to show that while Jimmy is the only one in actual danger in a number of ways, Kim is no less distressed than he is, because she cares about him so much. It acting as a follow-up to the previous montage, sets up a really cool contrast with aspects like who is fading in first, the singer's humming rather than singing, where the humming is located, and the dividing line disappearing at the end. Overall, it's a neat little reverse of the previous montage, where instead of drifting apart, they're coming back together. Both of these scenes are incredible, and hopefully I conveyed that to you today. And as always, thanks for watching.